Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oleg, this is Bond, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new to the channel and like the content, please subscribe. So as promised, here's a review of Hublot Spirit of Big Bang Titanium, a $25,000 watch. Let's get into it. Here, inside this box is the actual watch. All right, let me try to take it out. Put that to the side, just wanna show you what else comes here so we have this kind of a package and inside of it is a USB cord plus a kind of a Hublot card and the instructions and the warranty so it's all inside of here very well packaged kind of what you, exactly what you would expect for $25,000 all right there we go Here's the watch on this beautiful leather cushion. Let's open it up and put this box to the side. Now let's get one thing out of the way before we start this review and that's the price. Now of course $25,000 is a lot of money and the higher up you go in the luxury watches category the less of returns you will see it's basically diminishing returns the more money you spent on the watch because at the end of the day it just tells you the time however purchasing a watch it's all relative for example if you are making a hundred thousand dollars a year and you buy a five thousand dollar rolex or a ten thousand dollar rolex it sort of is acceptable now if you're spending twenty five thousand dollars on the watch and you're making a million dollars a year plus no big deal. It's just another watch. It's just another purchase. It's like saying, oh, well, Lamborghini is a useless purchase. Well, of course it's a useless purchase. It's just a toy. And so is this watch. Now, once we got that out of the way, I'm gonna review this watch as I would any other watch. So let's get started with the dimensions. Now the Hublot website says the dimension of the watch is 42 millimeters or 44 millimeters, but I can't find how they have measured it to be 42 or 44 millimeters. This way it's about 47 and a half. And if you take into account this protruding uh, kind of plastic part or rubber part, it's about 47, 48 millimeters. So any way you look at it, uh, I couldn't find it to be around uh, 42, 44 millimeters as they claimed. Now, lug to lug, uh, kind of hard to measure just because of the way the swatch is styled but it's around 56 uh, millimeters and we have a lug width. Again, hard to measure just because it's not a usual uh, bracelet or usual strap. We have about 32 millimeters and we have a thickness of around 15, uh, about 14 and a half millimeters. So yeah, it's a big watch. And uh, to pull off the swatch, you need a bigger size wrist or at least to have a big Ego. Now taking a closer look at the case, as the name would suggest, the case is titanium, which is pretty impressive. And in fact, this is the very first titanium case watch that I'm reviewing. Of course, there are other titanium case watches that are a lot more affordable, just never came across uh, my desk. Now we also have the titanium screws, pretty cool. We have the crown at three o'clock position. I'll show you how it operates a little bit later on. It's very simple to operate, very smooth as what you would expect in a watch of this caliber. The case is also curved, so it hugs the wrist really well, even with the bigger size uh, and my uh, kind of mid mid-size wrist, seven and a half inches or seven and a quarter inches, sorry. It fits really well. And even if you have a little bit of a smaller wrist, I think it would still fit well, just because of the curvature of the case. Uh, we also have a sapphire crystal, again, curved on both sides, at the back and also at the front. And the sapphire crystal does have anti-reflective coating, so you can see what time it is from all different types of angles. All right, so now taking a closer look at the dial and you can see all the little details that went into making this watch. One thing that I noticed wearing this watch on my wrist for a week is how easy it was to tell what time it was. 
I usually don't like skeletonized watches, the watches that expose movement in the back, just because, from my experience at least, they are kind of hard to read because there's too much going on. However, with these applied hour markings kind of being on the outside of the skeletonized part and the minute track running um, alongside the rectangular case, rectangular case, sorry, it makes it fairly easy to read time. And also these hands are fairly big, chunky. Again, very nice and easy uh, reading the time. We also have the chronograph function, which is currently running with the counterweight uh, of a Hublot logo uh, counterweighting this uh, red arrow seconds hand that's for the chronograph. We also have the minutes tracker running and we also have the hours uh, tracker running and it goes up to 12 hours. This uh, sub dial here at the nine o'clock position, well, that's for the seconds of the overall watch. We also have a date window between five and four o'clock. That's the red rectangle. And as you can see, we can see the overall date wheel. Now the overall date wheel is all made out of one piece, which is incredible and it looks really nice. Uh, I'm hoping the camera can pick it up because in person that just looks stunning. You can tell that a lot of work was put into designing this watch. We also have the Hublot logo at the 12 o'clock position. No other writing except for Swiss made at the bottom. Now would be as good time as any to talk about the movement. The watch features a Hublot 4700 series movement, which is of course based on Zenith El Primero. What that basically has, it has a 50 hour power reserve. It has 200 hand assembled individual parts. Of course, the chronograph, the date complication, as well as the frequency of 36,000 beats per hour so it's incredibly smooth you can see how smooth it is running around this track it's a uh, gliding motion by far the smoothest watch i have uh, encountered this far now taking a look at the back of course we have the display case back to show off this uh, amazing uh, movement as i mentioned 200 individual parts all put together by Hublot. Now, Hublot is of course owned by the same company as Tech Heuer, as well as Zenith. So they have access to some pretty spectacular uh, watchmakers. Even the router is skeletonized with the Hublot logo etched in, kind of a cool touch. And also uh, that exposes even more of the movement. So the router doesn't hide any of the movement when it's turning. And you can see all the gears and all the levers there. The movement is also beautifully decorated. Uh, the case back is titanium with the titanium screws. Once again, we have the Hublot, uh, titanium, spirit of Big Bang, and the uh, serial number back here. Now let's take a look at the strap. So the strap is lizard leather at the top and a high quality rubber in the middle and at the bottom to make the strap more comfortable and more durable. This watch was purchased in 2005. Uh, the owner of this watch, a good friend of mine, has worn it very regularly and the watch held up really, really well. The buckle here, again, done really well, very light, and uh, I believe this top part is also titanium with the Hublot written across it. The overall weight and feel of the watch is um, it's kind of deceiving because the weight is light. Uh, if you experienced the titanium watch before, this is, as I mentioned, my first, but my understanding is that it's a much lighter metal than stainless steel. So the watch feels very solid, feels very well put together, feels as, like a substantial quality item, but it doesn't feel heavy. So it's actually very light and very comfortable to wear on the wrist. Also the overall curvature of the watch makes it easier to wear on the wrist. Now, as I mentioned before, these are all applied indices for hour markings. They are loom. The loom is evenly applied, very legible, and even has loom on all the subdial hands, which is a nice touch. Now, the water resistance of this watch is 100 meters or 10 atmospheres, which is not fantastic, but it's also not too bad. Uh, the watches of this caliber usually don't have a very high water resistance, especially with these uh, pushers for the chronograph. Uh, 100 meters is very reasonable, especially if you look at a watch, let's say a AP um, Royal Oak, which has a water resistance of only 50 meters. So this is double of that, which is kind of cool. And uh, let's face it, 
even though this is kind of marketed as a sports tough watch i doubt that many people are doing a lot of sports while wearing this watch now let me show you what the chronograph function looks like so uh currently it's of course running we're gonna uh, pa pause it here stop it here and reset it like that so again we're gonna start it up as you can see it ticks very beautiful very smooth sweeping hand we're gonna pause it and watch what happens when i reset it it all goes back to the zero position quickly now uh, the feeling of the pushers is um, is very robust it feels substantial it feels solid as the overall feeling of the watch it's kind of consistent with the overall feel now let's take a look at this crown so it is signed crown it does feel uh, substantial and also matches the overall aesthetic of the watch uh, the thread on it is easy to operate if we unscrew the crown it is a screw down crown so we're gonna unscrew it all the way here um, and pull it out in the first position so the first position is actually to set the time of the watch and we just saw the date change so let's put it at six o'clock now once we have it at six o'clock we're gonna pull it out all the way to the second position and let's change the date very easy to change very smooth very satisfying push it all the way back in we're gonna push it and screw it back into place so overall a fantastic watch and either you like it or you hate it there's kind of no in between there are no people that are indifferent to this watch i happen to love it and here's the reason why wearing it on my wrist for one week straight was amazing i felt like i had a little secret no that nobody else knew about i was wearing a watch that cost twenty five thousand dollars but other people uh, majority of people 99.9% .9 had no no idea how much this watch costs and that was kind of a cool feeling to have however because this watch is a bit out of my comfort zone in terms of the pricing I always felt a little uncomfortable wearing it because I was afraid to ding it or bang it against something or scratch it or you know I just really didn't want anything to happen to the watch so that made the overall experience a little uh, uncomfortable uh, but uh, very positive because the watch is light and it wears really well and I like that substantial presence it's very aggressive it's very out there uh, I would compare this watch if it was a car it would be a Lamborghini loud uh, over the top unnecessary and kind of looks very powerful and uh, something that someone who has a lot of money who's young or young at heart would definitely buy now uh, the watch is not perfect so it does have some negatives let me go over them so first negative is uh the bracelet so as i mentioned the bracelet is actually of a great quality however it is a proprietary hublot bracelet i understand why they did it because it's business so every time you want to replace one of these bracelets you have to take it to them uh, to the certified uh, dealer or official repair shop and they would exchange the bracelet for you uh, now these bracelets are of a substantial cost another negative thing about the movement is the fact that it doesn't have uh, hacking now it's not a huge deal but i don't know why they chose not to put hacking on this caliber of a movement especially if you look at the overall quality and the finish of the movement not having hacking doesn't make any sense to me third is the water resistance so as i mentioned it's 100 meters it's pretty good for a watch of this caliber as i mentioned but i like my watches to have at least 200 meters water resistance especially as an everyday watch and especially as a watch that's marketed to be robust and reliable and tough as nails i'd be afraid uh, that uh, water might get into the movement and ruin uh, this beautiful piece of art and my last negative is kind of a positive and a negative it's not my personal negative but i know that uh, this watch will attract or disattract a lot of people just because of the price the over the top look of it it's not for everyone and again obviously it's not for everyone because of the price but if you are in a market for a $25,000 watch very few people would go for this and that's why I like it because it makes it very special and actually uh, until I had this watch on my wrist until I saw it uh, from my friend I haven't seen another example since or before and finally here's what the watch looks like on my seven and a quarter inch wrist as you can see again it fits really well very flush to the wrist even with the bigger uh, presence 
it does feel substantial, but because it's so light, it's very comfortable to wear. The leather and the uh, rubber are very soft, so it's a pleasure to wear and it hugs around the wrist really well. So you can tell that you are wearing an item of substantial value on your wrist. All right guys, so that was my review for Hublot Spirit of Big Bang Titanium. I do like the watch, but I gotta be honest with you. If I only had $25,000 that I had to spend on a watch right now, this wouldn't even be in my top five watches to buy. However, if I had unlimited amount of money, I would definitely buy this watch at some point. It's ambitious, it's aggressive, it's over the top, it's unnecessary, and that's why I like it. I appreciate you watching until the end. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what would be the watch that you would buy if you had uh, $25,000 to spend on a watch right now. Maybe you do, and maybe you are in the market to buy one of these watches. Let me know what is your choice. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.